have your seats. Amen. Y'all already know I'm not going to be up here long. Amen. But we honor the Lord today. We thank God for Bishop Jack Vine and Pastor Carl and Vine in the house this morning. Amen. Me and Pastor Carl were supposed to dress alike today. But we're going to save that dress for another occasion. Y'all wasn't ready for that dress. Amen. And then in the absence of our leader, the one I call my pastor bishop, Bishop Cortez Vine. Can we celebrate our leader in his absence? Amen. And then last but not least, can we celebrate our honorees today? Where my ladies at? Can y'all make some noise? Can y'all jump to y'all feet? We are a powerful force in the earth. Come on, ladies, make some noise and celebrate you. Amen. And then to my mothers, my mothers, my mothers, we celebrate you all this morning. Amen. I look at y'all and I'm reminded of my grandmother. Amen. Um, my grandmother spoke over my life that I would be doing what I'm doing right now when I was young and I was out there playing football with the fellas. See, I didn't play in dresses and stuff. That wasn't me. I played tackle football with the fellas. Amen. But she spoke over my life. She said, you're going to preach, girl. And it's amazing to be walking out the prophecy that my grandmother spoke over me years ago. Amen. And every time I stand, I try to honor her in some way. I'll sing a song that she like. I ain't singing today. Amen. But I just want to honor her. Amen. Because she spoke it. And I'm walking out the prophecy. Amen. Well, let's go to work. John chapter 16, verse 21. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. Amen. John 16, 21. Amen. I'm going to read it from the NIV, and then I'll read it from the Message Bible. And it reads, a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born... She forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. It says, when a woman gives birth, she has a hard time. There's no getting around it. But when the baby is born, there is joy in the birth. This new life in the world wipes out the memory of the pain. I'm going to give you a topic in just a second. When I gave birth to my baby girl, Taylor, my water broke. I had dilated fully to the 10, and I'm on the table pushing. He said, at each contraction, ma'am, you are to push. So the contraction came and I pushed. Another contraction came and I pushed. Another contraction came and he said, don't you push? I said, hold up. I'm at a 10. Water done broke. It's time to bring that thing forth. But he says, Jen, you can't push. Some of you walked in here and you're in your ninth month. You says, it's time for me to bring forth the vision. I'm going to dream this thing for a while. And it's time for me to bring it forth. But what do you do when you're ready to push and God says, pause? You can't push. But I wrote the vision. I'm ready to run with it. But the Lord says, pause. You cannot push. So I'm in labor and I'm at a pause. And I begin to feel this pressure. Women, you know what I'm talking about. 
I begin to feel this weight. And I tell him, I said, Doc, I got to go to the bathroom. The doctor says, ma'am, you don't have to use the bathroom. I said, Doc, I got to go to the bathroom. The doctor says, ma'am, the weight that you're feeling is not to go to the bathroom. The weight that you're feeling is letting you know you're ready, but she's not. So I had to endure a moment of wait until she was ready. See, you think that because you're at a pause place, it's punishment. But it's the process to get you to the birthing phase. So today, G is going to talk about it's worth the wait. It is, it is. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's worth the wait. So in the text, John 16, Jesus is talking to his disciples, right? And he's preparing them for his departure. But the disciples wasn't getting it. They was like, what you, what, what? Jesus said, I'm getting ready to get up out of here. And he said, but I'm coming back. They said, you leave it and you coming back. Jesus said, okay, let me give it to you like this. It's kind of like when a woman is in labor and she feels the pain. See, he says, but you're going to forget about that pain because that pain is going to be a rejoicing thing. He said, you're going to cry now, but you'll rejoice later. So he tells them, I'm trying to prepare you for the weight that I'm getting ready to carry, but I ain't going to carry it by myself. He said, because you're going to have a weight too. So your neighbor's worth the weight. So you saying, Jen, I came in heavy today. Because life is weighty. The burden of the Lord is weighty. Killing my flesh every day is weighty. My marriage is weighty. And scripture teaches us that we ought to lay aside every way, right? Scripture teaches us we ought to cast off, right? Scripture teaches us we're supposed to help each other bear burdens, weights, right? But in this season, you're going to have to learn what to lay aside and what to lay hold. Because every weight ain't the attack of the enemy. Some weights are positioning you to attain. So what happens is we'll lay aside weights, but we fail to assess them because some weights are worth something. But we so quick to want to cast them off that we don't take our time to know the value of what's in it because some weights are producing something in you. If you go to the gym and you walk in there and you say, I want to be strong, you don't just walk out. If you talk to your fitness instructor and you say, I want to be strong, You ain't gonna slap high five them and say, all right, and you gone. You gotta pick up a. So get this. I went through a season here not too long ago where so much stuff was happening. And it was stuff that I didn't even recognize. You know, some stuff you see, 
But sometimes stuff will hit you and take the wind out of you, right? So I was going through something real heavy. And I called my friends and I said, I need you to pray. And I love them kind of friends that don't ask for details. Because you got some of the friends, what happened? Who did it? When it happened? Girl, what you going to do? Man, I just need you to pray. Get you some friends that don't want the deets, okay? <laughs> so I went to work. I put my client to bed. I took out my sheet. I got this little sheet. I fluffed my sheet. I laid it on the floor. I laid on that floor. I got that kind of job where I can do that. I was in the guest room. I laid on the floor. And y'all, I went to town. I well to the heavens. Y'all hear me? I was in prayer. I was praying. I was crying. I was praying and I was crying. And then the Holy Ghost said, how is it that you're welling for something that you said you wanted? So I quieted my spirit, y'all. And I said, speak, Lord. He said, Jen, you asked to be a prayer warrior. He said, you told me to make you a house of prayer. You don't get to be a warrior without warfare. He said, you want to be a house of prayer? Do you know what it takes to build a house? He said, you got to tear up some stuff. He said, you got to lay some stuff. See, this is the thing. We say cute stuff until he start cutting on us. Lord, make me a house. That thing got to be inspected. See, this is it. This is what it is. We want the tadas. But we don't want the aha, it's a leak. We want the tada, nice light fixtures. Tada, it's dark. He said, Jen, you asked for this. I said, but I didn't know that came with it. Who, can y'all talk to me today? Look at your neighbor and say, it's worth. It's worth the wait. So I was out there. I came to church, and I was talking to Elder Anderson. Elder Anderson said something to me. He said, I could tell something was going on with you because I could see it in your face. I got in my car, and I was like, man. <laughs> it wasn't what he said, it's what he saw. We don't suffer believers, let me say this. Believers, we don't suffer as the unbelievers. We are to carry our weight a little different, right? Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna get you there, I'm gonna get you there. Sometimes God will give us what we need to determine if we can handle what we want. So while I was giving birth to Taylor, I'm still on the I'm still on the table, y'all. I was giving birth to Taylor. I'm still at a pause. So I asked him, I said, sir, can I push? And he didn't say anything. So mind you, contractions are still coming. And I said, sir, can I push? And doc, his, his name was Dr. Kruger. Go figure, right? Kruger. I said, Doc, can I push? And he didn't say nothing. So my coach is to the size of me. I said, hey, can I push? 
And they looking at me like, I oh. Because they weren't authorized to tell me that I could push. You got to be careful when you're bearing weight who you try to go after to just to give you the okay to bring it forth. Everybody ain't authorized to tell you to birth out and when to birth out. Because the doctor wasn't talking to me because the umbilical cord was wrapped around Taylor's neck. So for me to push in that moment could have been detrimental to her and me. See, you want people to tell you, girl, you all right. No, you're not. Stop trying to get authorization from those who aren't authorized. If other leaders have greater say than your leader, don't push. Because that thing could be detrimental to you and what you carry in. So, so I'm still at a pause. He ain't talking. I can't push. So the contraction came. And I hollered. Because at this moment, y'all, I hollered out because number one, I'm tired. He ain't telling me nothing. But he didn't have time to talk to me because he was working. So where I felt he had deserted me, he was working. See, y'all trying to say, God ain't speaking to me. God ain't talking to me. He ain't saying, no, he's working on you. You can't mistake his quietness for abandonment. Because he can't leave you nor forsake you. He's working on you. So again, I'm at a pause. And I hollered out. Because I was hurting. And then Dr. Kruger said, it ain't that bad. <laughs> so y'all know the old Jim was like, hold up. What? <laughs> but Wisdom said, okay, let's assess this situation. He's down there. You're up here. Yeah, you may want to back down on this one because you're not going to win this one. So I said, I'm going to let you have this one, Dr. Kruger. But Dr. Kruger says, it ain't that bad. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how you can go through something and you're bearing the weight of your struggle and somebody on the outside can tell you, it ain't that bad. when you're carrying the weight of your trauma and somebody on the outside will tell you, it ain't that bad. When you're struggling with your decisions and somebody on the outside will tell you, it ain't that bad. People that's on the outside looking in will judge you when you're on the inside dealing with it. I got something for that. Job 31 and 6 from the Amplified Bible. It says, oh, let him weigh me with accurate scales and let God know my integrity. Let me read that again. Job said, let him weigh me with accurate scales and let God know my integrity. Job said, because y'all scales are faulty. He said, I'm going to let him weigh me. See, here's the thing. Just because I carry it well doesn't mean it's not heavy. Because I don't look 
look like what I'm going through don't mean I ain't going through it. See, you a judge a thing because you may have weighed it and you carried it, but you can't judge how I carry my weight. You can help me, but don't judge. You can pray for me. Don't judge. Tell your neighbor, it's worth the weight. Job said, and let God know my integrity. It ain't what you're carrying sometimes. It's how you're carrying it. And sometimes God wants to know that we'll carry it and won't cuss. <laughs> See, when you carry it as a believer, I got to go back to it. You understand that he won't put more on me than I can bear. So if I have it, that means I can bear it. So how you carry it matters. So if you coming through here, oh. And let me say this. We are human. Right? We go through things, right? But we don't suffer as those that don't have hope. We don't do that. I carry it so he'll know my integrity. So he'll look at me and he said, I trust her to carry that. Because get this, get this, and I'm almost done. Sometimes what you're carrying ain't even for you. What I'm carrying is for them. So now how do you carry that? They're watching you to see is there really a reality in this in serving this God you be talking about? They will watch us. And we, listen, it's okay to cry. But you can't wallow in that thing because they're watching you. And they're saying, if God can bring you through that. Listen, y'all, listen, listen. The Bible says, in the time of travel, he'll put a song in your mouth. You can go through something and be singing. Well, see, Jen, I just believe in being real. I don't be, I ain't about that fake stuff. If I'm hurting, I'm hurting. I'm not saying be fake. I'm saying be Bible. Yes. The word says in a time of trouble, he'll give you a song. Why ain't you singing? Scripture says it's better that you suffer for well than for evil. And if I'm suffering for well, it says you're supposed to be happy. I did not say, the Bible says. So now when I understand that what I'm carrying is God ordained, I carry it differently. When I understand that nations are tied to what I'm carrying, I carry it differently. People are broken. And we have a good church. I'm 
I'm not ashamed. See, this is the thing. This is the thing. Let me say this. Let me say this. Not only is it worth it, you're worth the wait. Jesus went to Calvary and he bore the cross because he said, we worked it. So that means regardless of your past, regardless of your right now, you have to see yourself in your future. And what you're carrying, y'all listen, it's not permanent. It's temporal. I'll endure a temporal wait for an eternal outcome. And again, that weighs on how I carry it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. it's worth the wait. So let me say this, because it's Women's Day, right? So all my single ladies, where y'all at? Let me say this. So whatever I'm about to say, I get clemency. We still going to be cool when I say it, right? Y'all still going to hug me when y'all see me out there, right? All right, let's go get it. Let's go get it. Those of us who are desiring to be married, marriage is weighty. Marriage is ministry. But let me say this. The season is over where we keep hollering about Boaz and you don't know where to find it in the Bible. We done hollering about Boaz and you don't know book, chapter, verse. It's weighty, it's weighty. Just, I'm gonna stay like I'm just gonna stay in the field and keep cleaning. Ma'am, she was cleaning. I'm gonna see you at Bible study Wednesday night, seven o'clock. It's weighty, and we want it for the wrong reasons. We want them, but we don't want the weight. We want to look good together. We want to be arm candy but can't be soul food. I, I want to be on his arm but I can't feed his soul. playing our wedding we gonna have dresses that hang like this but your relationship is hanging like that single ladies we still good we still good Tell your neighbor, it's weighty, it's weighty, it's weighty. My married folks, where y'all at? So here it is. You say, Jen, don't come for me. You ain't married. I've been married. I got you. So today, my married ladies, right, we're going to be cool afterwards, right? Okay. So today, you gonna go get your husband off that rooftop. You know where the Bible speaks, he'd rather be on the roof than to be in the house with Fuss and Felicia. We 
gonna go get them off that rooftop today. Well, you sitting there, my, my husband ain't on the rooftop. He's sitting there like, yes, I am, yes, I am. Good. Preach to him, preach to him, preach. <laughs> my, my, my husband ain't on no rooftop. He might be sitting next to you physically, but mentally, he on that roof. <laughs> Let me say this real talk. You can't talk to your man like he ain't a man and then expect him to be a man. You know how we like to be wooed? I love to be wooed. And we like for men to say nice things to us and make us feel like we that thing, even in a body. We wanna feel like we that thing. Your husband wanna feel the same way. Look at your neighbor and say, it's weighty, it's weighty, it's weight, it's weight. We gonna go get him off that rooftop. And he got a whole Airbnb up in that mood. <laughs> Married women, we still good? All right. Tell your neighbor it's worth the weight. What makes the weight worth it? Weights reveal what I'm made of and what I made up. Weights have a way of showing what's really on the inside of you and what's really not. Because when you're dealing with life and stuff gets hard, and your first resort is to let folks have it. There's something in you, and then there's something that's not. But here's the thing. He'll give us those weights to reveal what's in us that shouldn't be. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? That loves me so much that he'll want to bring to the surface the stuff in me that the weight's going to prove it. So we can deal with it and we can get on up from here. It's too many Miriams outside the camp. We can't move on until it's revealed. Tell your neighbor, it's worth the weight. What makes the weight worth it? Because weights are his will. There's no such thing as a oops with God. God don't, uh oh. If you are carrying it, it's with purpose. The God weights, let me be clear. The God weights, it's with purpose. And when you understand that it's a God purpose, it's God ordained, you carry it with care. Because God trusted me. Lord have mercy. He trusted me to carry this. So that sickness in your body that's not unto death, you carry it different when you know God is a healer. And the thing about it is the healer lives on the inside of me. What makes it worth it? First Peter 5 and 10 tells me, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who imports his blessings and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete 
confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Making you what you ought to be. What I'm carrying is temporal. But the outcome will be eternal. He's going to perfect that thing concerning you. After you suffer for a it sets you up for a glory encounter. And the glory is not revealed to you. It's not revealed for you. It's revealed in you. Do y'all know how amazing that is? That what you're carrying, that sets you up for the glory encounter. That he'll do in you. See, y'all talking about checks in the mail. A husband. No, his glory is weighty. Show us your glory in you. Everybody standing. Before I moved into my house, I was going to sell all my old stuff. And when I got ready to post it, the Lord said, you're not selling it. You're going to seed it, right? And I was like, Lord, is that you? Because uh, I got I to furnish this new place. He said, no, you're going to sell all your old stuff. You're going to give it away. So I started posting all the stuff on social media. And my, my tag was, if you can haul it, you can have it. I say the same thing to you. If you can haul it, you can have it. Bow your heads. God, we thank you. We thank you for the word that has gone forth. God, we You may have heard us talk about giving your life to Christ or receiving salvation. I wanted to speak with you a little bit more about what that means. I believe the big question is, why? Why would you give your life to Christ? The first thing that's really important to understand is, as human beings, we've all done something wrong, whether that's lying or cheating or stealing, and the list goes on. No one is perfect. God calls those things sin. The second thing that we have to understand is that sin, the bad things that we've done, they separate us from God. It drives a wedge between us and God. It's like when you have a serious disagreement with a friend and you feel that, that distance or that gap or space emotionally in your relationship with them, it's similar to that. Our sin caused distance between us and God. And that sin or the wrong things that we've done, they can't just be swept under the rug or ignored by God. They separate us from Him. The third thing that is so important for us to understand is that God loves us and doesn't want us to be separated from Him. He hates that. So He gave us a way to reconnect with Him. He sent His one and only Son, Jesus, from heaven down to earth to live a sinless life and show us how we can live a life in relationship with God again. But he didn't stop there. He willingly sacrificed his life to erase all of our sins so we don't have to live in fear of sin causing that separation or that wedge anymore. Nothing can prevent us from having a relationship with God again and nothing will ever separate us from his love. The fourth thing that's important for us to understand is that it's up to us to give our life to God, to believe and accept that God loves us. He sent his son to die for us and wants to forgive us for the sins that we've committed. God wants us to have a choice. If you force someone to love you, is that really love? Of course not. God wants us to respond to him genuinely 
out of our understanding of his love for us and the lengths he's taken to restore our relationship with him. God walks us through this in his word, the Bible, in Romans 10, 9 through 10. It says, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For it is by believing in our heart that we are made right with God and it is by confessing with our mouth that we are saved. That's all we have to do. Accept what God has done for us, confess and believe. I know that may sound simple or, or even cliche, but I promise you it really is just that simple. So wherever you are today, at home, in the car, at the gym, at school, you can talk to God right now and tell him, I'm so sorry God for the sins I've committed. I believe you sent your son to die for my sins and I accept you in my life as my Lord. When you do that, you're making a decision. When you say that out loud and choose to believe, you are giving your life to God, and that is the best decision you will ever make. If you've given your life to God today, please let us know. We want to give you some resources to help you grow in this new and exciting journey in your life. Please visit our website, ecinternational.org, select Next Steps, and then select New Believer, or scan the QR code on the screen and select I've Accepted Christ. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.